Hi, Jerry Tashwa again with mallet tip number four. This time we're going to be talking about dampening and pedaling. Obviously on a vibraphone, you have different responsibilities than a marimba player. On the vibraphone, when you push the pedal down and hit a note, the note rings. On a marimba, when you hit a note, you get something like that. So we have to figure out ways to control the dampening at the ringing, uh, how to make our, our playing as clean as possible. And these are issues that uh, are a prime concern for the vibraphone player. In my method book, again, a contemporary mallet method, I talk about all of the exercises and all the techniques that you need to master uh, in order to play the vibes cleanly uh, and accurately. And I narrowed them down to five techniques and I'd like to talk about them. The first one is what I call slide dampening. Slide dampening is primarily where you're playing scale type passages. Basically one mallet in, in this case my right hand, will be playing the melody going up and a mallet in my left hand will be in pretty much the center of the bars following up afterwards dampening and in just here's here's how it goes then when i change directions the mallet in the other hand So that's slide dampening, again, primarily for melodies that are scale type passages. Obviously in music you have leaps and intervallic situations that are going to require a different technique to be able to master. This is called touch tone. Touch tone is a little tricky. It takes a little while to co coordinate your hands and the ability to do this exercise. So the mallet in my right hand will hit a note. And then at the same time I hit a note with my left hand, the original note will be dampened with the original mallet that hit it. So you don't actually hear the dampening take place. Here we go. Hit a note. There you go. And that's just called touch tone. And again, it's, it takes you a little while to get a hang on that one because it's, it's a coordination thing and it's one of those mental things. And everybody that ever tries it, for some reason, it seems like it takes three days. The first day you try it and it just isn't working. The second day you're, you're sort of getting an idea, but it's not working. Then I remember laying in bed at night, just kind of going over it visually in my head. And then I came to the instrument like the third day and all of a sudden it makes sense. So anyway, give that one a try. The third dampening technique is one that I call adjacent note. And this one's fairly simple. As I hit a note, in this case I'll hit the note D, and then I'm going to go down and hit the note C, and in one motion I'm going to slide right over and dampen the original D. So here we go. D. Fairly easy technique and a really nice one to have in your arsenal of available tools to dampen on the instrument. So that covers melodic linear playing of scale type passages, that's the slide dampening. Touch tone is the one where you're doing the intervallic leaps and this one is adjacent note. The next one is something that I call hand dampening. Hand dampening is predominantly a right-handed technique and what I'm going to do is as I hit the note G up here, then I'm going to go down to the G flat. I'm basically going to extend the pinky of my right hand to make contact with the bars as I'm hitting from one note to the other. So again, you don't actually hear the dampening take place and so you can do things like Okay. 
And that's again just use, using the pinky of your hand to do the dampening. So that covers pretty much those type of techniques. Now, the pedal. The pedal has two functions. The most important function of the pedal is to clear the harmony. So if you hit a chord, go to another chord, pedal, go to another chord. So you're clearing out the harmony for each one of these chords. That's pretty easy to understand. And then you use all the other hand dampening uh, abilities then to execute your melodies where maybe while a chord is ringing. Okay, now the pedal has two functions. The first one I gave you was to clear the harmony. The second one is called flutter pedaling. If you didn't use the pedal and you played Basically, you would get a very, uh, very staccato sound. I mean, if that's the sound you want, by all means, there it is. Very staccato. But generally in music, you want the notes to have some air around them. You want them to kind of breathe. And the ability to sustain a note a little bit to kind of leak into the next note is, is a desirable trait. So what you want to do is you find the point that you're pushing down on the dampener pedal. And then just when the notes start to ring. So I'm going to push down on the pedal. So you can hear like right there where it's just starting to let the note ring. And I memorize that then with my foot. And then what I'm going to do is essentially I'm going to bounce the dampener bar with my foot off of the bars at that memorized point that I talked about where it just starts to ring at the rate at which I'm playing. So if I'm playing slow, I'll do it fairly slow. If I'm playing faster, I'll do it a little bit faster. And this allows the notes then to have a little bit of ring, a little bit of sustain leaking into each other. And it's just a, a kind of a more of a musical, uh, nicer effect. Here it is. So here we go. Now, these dampening techniques need to be so well learned and so well practiced that they become just a subconscious thing. You don't want to have to be playing, thinking about like a slide damp and hand dampening, touch tone, pedal, blah, blah, blah. This is something you want to do. It's like breathing. You know, you don't really think about breathing. You just breathe. So as you're playing your music and you're improvising, you want to make sure that your ears are hearing the degree of sustain that you want and making sure that you're not having too much ringing, that things are starting to sound bad. And vibraphone ringing can be a horrible sound. And kind of a way of, of knowing if you're having a problem is to record yourself really quickly, uh, especially in the analog world. If you have too much uh, saturation of ringing notes, it just fries the tape. It just doesn't record very well. It's not quite as bad in the digital world, but it's still obvious that you have too much ringing. Or if you're practicing and you notice things in your room are vibrating, like picture frames are vibrating, or if you have a glass of water sitting there and you, white caps are jumping out of your water, that might be an indication that you have to work on your dampening techniques. Again, these things, all these five techniques, which again are spelled out in my book and have exercises on how to do it and, and little things like that, have to be subliminal. They're second nature, they're subconscious. You just do it by knowing that this is what you have to do to have your music come up. So I hope that helps you with um, being a clean and accurate vibraphone player. Uh, and look for our next tip number five, which will be coming up soon. Thank you so much.